We're here in Yosemite Valley today to show you how I do panoramics. So what we're gonna do is set up and show you a panoramic and show you all step-by-step step how we do it. Then we're gonna come back to the computer and I'll show you how we actually put it together in Lightroom. All that coming up. you're doing when you're setting up your panoramic is we're not going to be shooting horizontal the the thought is that you're going to shoot across like this and that's not as good as what we can do if we do it vertically then we have the ability to have a lot more pixels in the shots that make up the panoramic so for today we're starting with a 24 millimeter lens that we're going to hit this is a zoom lens we're having on 24 and i'll show you the difference between using a 24 and as we get longer lenses so we're going to clamp this on in a vertical position onto our tripod so that our camera is gonna be vertical. And one of the things that we wanna do when we're doing this is we wanna make sure that our camera is level. So we start with a leveling base down here, as you can see, but we wanna level the base and then we also wanna level the bubble where our camera is. And I just do that, you only really need one level, but what I wanna do when I'm panning is this camera is gonna be unloosened right on the pan, and this is always gonna be level as it turns. So if that's level, then this is gonna to stitch together a lot easier in, in post. So let's go ahead and start. And what we're gonna do, the very first thing we do, our very first exposure, is we're gonna take a picture of our hand. And that way, when we get back in the Lightroom, we'll see this is the beginning of this series. So let's go ahead and compose what we want. We wanna compose on the back, and we're gonna take our first picture. And I use a cable release, which is uh, something to make sure that the camera isn't moving when I shoot. So let's go ahead and fire off our first one. And then we're gonna move. One of the things you have to do with a mirrorless camera is you have to kind of reset it to make sure you're looking through the video and not looking at the image that you just shot. So now as we move it, we can see the frame changes and I usually overlap by about a third. Then we'll do another shot. And again, I gotta reset it. Then I can come and move it just a little bit more, a third or so. It doesn't matter how many shots you take because it's digital. We can just continue to shoot more and more as we go. So this is up to about four or five shots and we'll do one more just to make sure we get this side here. And then we're set. And the very last thing we do again is we take a shot of our hand. So now we know that that series is done for that lens. So what we've done is we've shot about four or five shots with in the camera and vertical, everything's level and we've shot across our scene. So this is a 24 millimeter. Let me show you what it's gonna look like with a little bit longer lens. All right, so now what we've done is we set our lens up to be a 50 millimeter lens. And that means we're gonna get a little bit closer and we're gonna end up compressing these mountains with one another as we go along. The thing that you always have to remember when shooting a panoramic is you wanna be shooting on manual. So whatever your first exposure is, that's gonna be identical to the whole scene. You never wanna have your camera on automatic exposure because if the light slightly changes or it sees maybe a little more snow in the shot, it's gonna stop that down and you're gonna have a change in exposure across and your sky is gonna look uneven. So we just put this on manual when we shoot, when we're shooting our panoramic. So let's go ahead and do a series here. Again, the first thing we do, is we shoot a shot of our hand just to know that that's the beginning of our series. And then we're gonna go ahead and shoot. So what we've done is we've set up our camera at 70 millimeters. So now this is gonna allow us to be closer to our subject and it's gonna compress the subjects in the background. So in this case, El Capitan is going to be closer, but also Half Dome is gonna be relatively closer to El Capitan. So it'll be a little bit more of a feature of this panoramic. One thing you always need to remember is to leave your camera on autofocus. So once you focus on the mountains, leave it alone, don't touch it. You wanna make sure that your focus and your exposure are identical on all those shots because you want this all to be seamlessly put together. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll start with shooting my hand. And then we're gonna to shoot to a little bit to the left of El Capitan. Take about a third. We add about a third to the image that we overlap. So that's what we did, we went through three different lenses. We went from 24 millimeter that was wide, took about four or five shots. Then we did 50 millimeters, took about six or seven shots. And then we did 70 millimeters. It's gonna take about eight or nine shots. So now what we're gonna do is do something a little bit different. We're gonna get a longer lens in still and 
put this together in probably in some rows to compress all this. And I'll show you a trick that really makes these exposures work really good. We'll do that next. So now we've set up a zoom lens and we're at about 140 millimeters on this shot. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take across the mountaintop. So one of the things you have to do when you're doing a panoramic with a really long lens or a much longer lens is you gotta make sure that you get at least some mountaintop in the shot because Photoshop or Lightroom isn't gonna know how to stitch sky if it's just sky to sky to sky. You need to be able to put in exactly a little bit of mountaintop so when you're pulling across, you'll have something to stitch. So we'll start with this. We've zoomed up to the top and you'll see this on the computer. We're gonna, again, shoot a shot of our hand, take our first shot, and then rotate the camera just a little bit. And this is where you gotta be a little more critical of your overlap. You gotta make sure that you're overlapping at least 30%. So the movements need to be a lot slower here, or a lot more uh, perfected, because you don't wanna have a situation where you're, when you're, putting this panoramic together that you don't have enough for the to stitch and that comes in the overlap and the only reason not to shoot one a, another shot is just quantity of images but who cares we're shooting digital so let's just keep shooting the quantity of images that we need in order to get this shot there now we're going to come back to where we were and what you need to do now is you have to consider the overlap from top to bottom so we're going to just move this camera down just a little bit in order to make sure that we've got some overlap that the camera can actually determine. So we're gonna start again and do another row and make sure you get plenty of images. Again, we're gonna shoot our hand because we're starting a new row. We wanna make sure that that series is easy to find because we're gonna ultimately do these panoramics all by themselves and then we'll stitch the panoramics together. So this is how we create the panoramics here we're going to go back into the studio and i'm going to show you in lightroom how we actually assemble this and make it a photograph we're back in the studio after our trip to yosemite to process our panoramic shots i'm going to show you how to do this all in lightroom also with a bonus in photoshop if you like let's get started we're in lightroom and we can see here that we've got all of our images that we shot that day including the pictures of the hand that i shot in between takes so we can look at this one, and this one you can see down over here that this was shot at 24 millimeters. So this, this was the focal length of the lens that we did. And you can see there's probably one, two, three, looks like there's five that were shot with the 24 millimeter. Again, we were shooting vertical because we wanted to make sure that we had as many pixels as we can in each shot. If you shot two horizontals and, pan and stuck them together, then it wouldn't be much of a panoramic. It'd be like two shots and you're not really getting the advantages of a panoramic, which is the incredible detail you can get by having so many shots build up one shot. So these are five of them and we go right click, go into photo merge and hit panorama. So what I use is Lightroom will create this and I've set up spherical as the one that I use the most. There is cylindrical and perspective, but this one seems to work the best for just about everything that I do. And then once you see what you're, you've got here on your preview, then go ahead and hit merge and it'll go through and merge and create that file. And what's really nice about Lightroom is it takes those files, however many you did, builds them into a panoramic and then returns it. You can see it right here. It returns it right back to, uh, to Lightroom. So you'll always have it in your files. And so I also went and shot that with, you'll scroll down you can see every time there's a hand that I know there's a new set of images that I shot with. So in this case, here's a hand and we shot this with, uh, well, it was 49 millimeters, but it was 50 millimeters essentially. And you can see that took seven images to do. And the 70 millimeter one took 11 images to do. So let's just go in here real quick, like to the 50 millimeter and you can see what we did. We took those seven images and then we're gonna do the same thing. We'll select them all, right click, go into photo merge, go to panoramic and then let Lightroom, give us a preview. There's a little panoramic preview that it's gonna create. And once it creates it, then it's gonna say, oh, do you wanna complete it? And so then that's when you hit merge. And you'll see here that we hit merge and it's gonna go ahead and create uh, 
a complete panoramic and return it back to Lightroom, which is what we want it to do. We want to be able to have all of those in Lightroom so we can always access them if we ever need to. So it'll go through and you can see up here, it's thinking away. This is a little taxing on some computers. When you start adding larger files, this is a huge file and you have all the depth. It's a, it's actually, it's a DNG file, which means it's a raw file that you can actually go back in and do whatever raw creative work you want to do with it. And that gives you a lot of freedom when you're building these panoramics. So here's a 70 millimeter one and you'll see here, that this took more shots, this took 11 shots to get all of the images. Cause again, we're using a closer up lens, a lens that's gonna be closer to the magnification of the, of the image. So it's gonna end up taking more shots to get across on that whole line of panoramics. So as we look at this, we're gonna go through and we'll take a look at our completed panoramic. So I did one other thing though, that I think is kind of cool and you might like this. So when we go into our photographs here, down at the bottom, I then created, if you remember, I created a, a panoramic with a longer telephoto lens. It was actually set to 150 millimeters. So I did a whole bunch of shots and it took a lot to get across the top. I think it took, uh, let's see, it took us, it took us 17 images to get across. And what I did when I was shooting it is I was shooting not just the sky because Photoshop or Lightroom isn't gonna be able to stitch just sky. Uh, we wanna give it something to stitch. So we went across the top of the mountaintops and then we just tilted the camera down and did another row and did another row. We ended up doing four rows. So you'll see here that we ended up building. So here's an example of the, of the top row. And this is all stitched together with 17 images. And then we went a little bit further and we did another section down, another 17 images or so of the middle portion of that image. So we built all of these uh, panoramics. Now the problem here is that Lightroom struggles with putting that sort of thing together. So this ends up being four rows of panoramics that we're gonna build together in one huge panoramic shot. So, so Lightroom does struggle with that. And, and I was denied a couple of times on, on my other computer of being able to build that kind of a panoramic. So I don't know if it has to do with the, the hardiness of your computer or is just Lightroom is limited when it comes to these gigantic files. Because remember, this is a file made up of 17 images. So you can imagine if, you're, if your megapixels are 50, that's 50 times 17. That's how many pixels are in roughly in this shot. So what I did is I outputted these, I exported them. So I exported all of these pieces into a folder. And then once you export them, and when you export them, always export them as full size 300 DPI images. And they'll go in, now you can go into Photoshop, and this is how you do it in Photoshop. Go into Photoshop, go into edit, or file rather, and look for automate, and go to automate, pull down, and go to photo merge. So very similar to what we had in Lightroom. But what it does is it, it asks us, where are those images? So we grab these images here, put them together, and we say, okay, so those are those four panoramic images, top, the two middle ones, and the bottom one put together. And then we tell Photoshop to do this panoramic. So it'll start building this panoramic based on those four images, so it'll stitch from top to bottom, which is really what we wanted to do. And you can see over here in the layers palette that each one was layered in and grabbed just the sections that, it, that we need. So here's the thing though, you can see here where I missed some of the shots down on the bottom, missed a couple here, but that's a pretty easy fix in Photoshop. You could crop, you could just use the crop tool and crop in to the area that you wanna keep, which is all of the area that Unfortunately, it'd be cropped to here, which isn't bad, but that if we didn't want that, here's the workaround for it. You take your file, and the first thing you do is we're gonna take all of these files, we're gonna make a new uh, layer. So we're gonna click new layer, add a new layer up over here. I'll move that here so we can see a little bit better. And then in this layer, we're gonna make a combo layer, which is shift in the, in the Mac, shift, option, command, E and that makes a whole new layer up there. If you're using a PC, it's shift, control, alt, and hit E, and it'll uh, then make an, a complete layered shot, uh, file, a one layer that will, be, that will combine all of the layers below it, which is what, it's combo layer is what I call it. 
So now what we're going to do, we're working on this one, and we're going to uh, go ahead and take our lasso tool and select. So we're going to select this area that we're going to want to have fixed and make sure it's completely selected. And now what we're going to do is use the content aware fill. So we'll go to content aware fill. Now Photoshop is going to say, okay, I want to fill that area with, with what I think is right. So you have the ability in this content aware fill, all this green area is editable. So I'm going to erase these mountains because I don't want it dragging from the mountains to create this. I just want them to just, I want it just to grab any information it can from just the trees because that's what we want filled in over here. And our sample shows that it did just that. So we can just go ahead and, and then it fills it in. So we can see here by hitting uh, Control or Command D, depending on your Mac or PC, now we've got a full, pretty full image that we can crop. So let's go back into our crop tool and crop this. And again, I don't have Photoshop do the cropping. I like to do the cropping because it only takes a second or two and it just feels like I'm getting a little more control over the whole thing when it's all said and done. So there's an image that's really a huge file when it's all said and done. Let's go back into Lightroom and just compare these here of these completed panels. So here's the first one that we did at 24 millimeter lens. So remember, we shot these verticals. So these are 24 millimeter lens shots on the on the on its side and it created this panoramic which is nice and it does have a lot of depth if that's what you're looking for is that front to back depth it depends again on the style of photography you're going for and this one is 50 millimeters so it's basically the same scene although what happens with the longer lens is it compresses the the subjects together a little bit more in each in each file so a 50 millimeter is gonna compress things a little bit more. Like in this case, Half Dome is gonna to appear to be a little closer to El Capitan than the 24 millimeter shot. And as we move on, we go to the 70 millimeter shot. We can see here that again, it's quite a bit closer. So what's nice about this, if you want to go up there and take this same shot at a regular horizontal with a 24 millimeter or even a 50 millimeter, you probably could do it, no problem. When you get to a 70 millimeter, you can't get back far enough to get this whole scene. So a panoramic is your good choice to go ahead and shoot a bunch of files and then stitch them together later. So that's what we did here and this is the 70. Now this is uh, this is the 150 millimeter file that we did in Photoshop with the four strips and crop down. It's a gigantic file, so you do have to save it as a large Photoshop document file. But you can see that Half Dome really is quite a bit bigger as compared to El Capitan when you look at the, the 24. When you compare that to the 24 millimeter image, you can see how it feels like it zoomed it all up and it really keeps everything in the shot. So that gives you an example of some different types of ways that you can create a panoramic using Lightroom and then maybe Photoshop if you need to, to create a panoramic of whatever scene it is you're looking to do. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember to ring the bell to be reminded of my next video. Now, if you'd like to support this channel, the best way to do it is just share this video with others. And if you're so inclined, you're welcome to go over to my website, imagelight.com. Click on the digital products page. I do have some products there for sale, but uh, I appreciate anything that you do. And I'll leave a link in the description below of how to get to my website as well. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Terry Vanderheiden.